China. 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 October 2025. A research team at Peking University published something in Nature Electronics that made every chip engineer in Silicon Valley stop and stare at their screens in disbelief. They built an analog computing chip using resistive random access memory that processes calculations 1,000 times faster than NVIDIA's H100 GPU while consuming 100 times less power. And here's the kicker. They built it using older 7 nanometer manufacturing technology that the United States never bothered to sanction because everyone assumed it was too primitive to matter. Jensen Huang saw this coming. At the Financial Times AI Summit in London just weeks ago, the CEO of NVIDIA stood on stage and said something nobody expected to hear from the man who built a $5 trillion empire selling GPUs to the world. He said China is going to win the AI race. Not might win. Will win. When the person who literally powers almost every major AI model today tells you his own technology is approaching obsolescence, you need to pay attention. Let me explain what just happened because this changes everything. For the past hundred years, we've been doing computing wrong. Every computer you've ever used, every smartphone, every gaming console, every data center running ChatGPT operates on digital computing. Information gets broken down into ones and zeros, bits that are either on or off. Your processor does calculations in one physical location while your data sits in memory somewhere else. Every single operation requires data to travel back and forth between these two places. This year, particularly the last six months, demand of computing has gone up substantially. And this is what's happened. Because AI went from uh, simple one-shot one -shot answers to these reasoning and thinking AI, the results are so good. This is called the von Neumann bottleneck, and it's why your laptop gets hot and why training a large AI model can consume more electricity than a small town uses in a month. Before digital computing dominated everything, engineers experimented with analog computers. Instead of ones and zeros, analog machines used continuous electrical signals that could represent infinite values between on and off. Think of a light dimmer instead of a light switch. For certain types of math, especially the kind involved in modeling real-world physics, analog computers were actually faster than early digital machines. But they had one fatal flaw that killed the technology. They couldn't maintain precision. Electrical noise, temperature changes, and signal drift meant that a calculation starting out accurate would slowly degrade into garbage. Digital one because it was stable, predictable, and reliable. A transistor is either conducting electricity or it isn't. No ambiguity. No drift. That precision problem is what Chinese researchers just solved. Their chip uses resistive random access memory cells that store information as different resistance levels. Higher resistance means less electrical current flows through. Lower resistance means more current flows. Each tiny memory cell can hold not just two states like digital memory, but hundreds of different resistance values. When you need to do a calculation, the chip doesn't move data anywhere. The memory cell itself becomes the processor. Current flows through these cells, and the resistance determines the output. Thousands of calculations happen simultaneously in the exact same physical space where the data live. The Peking University team achieved what they call five orders of magnitude improvement in analog precision. That's 100,000 times more accurate than any analog computer ever built. They tested it on matrix equation solving, which is the mathematical foundation of training neural networks, and the results are staggering. 1,000 times the throughput of an NVIDIA H100. 100 times better energy efficiency. An accuracy equal to 24-bit fixed-point digital systems. This isn't theoretical lab science. They manufactured this chip using commercial production processes that exist right now in Chinese fab. 
Here's where the geopolitics gets interesting. Since 2022, the United States has been blocking China from buying advanced GPUs. No H100S, no A100S. The entire strategy was built on one assumption. Without access to cutting-edge American chips, China couldn't keep up in artificial intelligence. But sanctions have a funny way of backfiring. When you cut someone off from technology, you don't make them give up. You make them invent around you. Look at what happened with Huawei. The U.S. government put them on the entity list in 2019, cutting off access to American suppliers. Everyone predicted the company would collapse. Instead, Huawei developed their own operating system, manufactured their own chips, and actually increased their global market share in telecom infrastructure. The same pattern is playing out now but at a much larger scale. While American companies spent billions refining digital GPU architecture, making transistors smaller and clocks faster, Chinese researchers asked a completely different question. What if we don't need digital chips at all? Energy is the real battleground here. Training GPT-4 required computational power equivalent to running thousands of high-end gaming PCs continuously for months. The electricity costs alone run into millions of dollars. NVIDIA's latest GPUs consume 700 watts of power and require massive cooling systems. American data centers are already straining electrical grids in states like Virginia and Texas. China looked at this problem and realized that whoever can do AI computation most efficiently wins the race, not whoever has the most powerful chip. An analog chip that delivers similar performance while using 7 watts instead of 700 watts doesn't just save money. It fundamentally changes what's possible. China has structural advantages nobody's talking about. Their government provides electricity subsidies to technology companies that can cut power costs by 50%. They're building AI-ready power infrastructure specifically designed for high-performance computing. Provinces compete to offer the best terms to attract tech investment. When you combine chips that use 1% of the energy with electricity that costs half as much, you're not looking at incremental improvement. You're looking at a paradigm shift. The applications are already obvious. Next-generation 6G networks need to process signals from hundreds of antennas simultaneously in real time. Current digital processors can't keep up with the math. Analog chips can handle massive parallel signal processing while using minimal power. Training the next generation of AI models could take days instead of months. Smartphones could run sophisticated AI locally without needing cloud connections, which means better privacy and no latency. Military drones could fly longer and process battlefield intelligence faster because low-power chips mean longer battery life and more capability in smaller packages. Right now, Silicon Valley has no response. NVIDIA's roadmap is more digital GPUs with more transistors consuming more power. Intel is struggling to manufacture chips at advanced node. AMD is playing catch-up. Nobody in America has a major program developing analog computing at scale. Chinese researchers are already working on the next generation of these chips with larger arrays, better calibration, and enhanced precision. They're targeting deployment in telecommunications first, then AI training centers, then defense applications. The timeline isn't someday in the future. It's two to three years. This could be bigger than TSMC becoming the choke point for advanced chip manufacturing. TSMC controls how chips get made, but analog computing changes what a chip fundamentally is. It's not about one company or one factory. It's about two completely separate technological paradigms that may not be compatible. Digital and analog could become parallel computing ecosystems serving different purposes and controlled by different countries. The irony is almost poetic. Export controls designed to stop China's AI development may have accelerated the breakthrough that makes American chips irrelevant. October 2025 might be the moment historians point to when they explain how technological leadership shifted. 
A hundred years ago, we abandoned analog computing because we couldn't solve the precision problem. China just proved we gave up too soon. And now they're holding all the cards. Since December 1st, China has taken a strategic step that could redefine the global semiconductor industry. A new regulation on rare earths requires that any lithography equipment containing at least 0.1% of these Chinese materials must obtain an export license. Additionally, exports of machinery and essential materials for advanced chip manufacturing, including logic semiconductors of 14 nanometers or smaller, are now subject to a case-by-case -case approval system. This move not only ensures China controls its strategic resources but also directly impacts Dutch companies dominating the sector, such as ASML, the world leader in lithography machines. The geopolitical context of this decision traces back to the Netherlands' intervention in Nexperia, a Chinese semiconductor company, on September 30th. Without prior warning, Amsterdam removed the Chinese CEO and transferred 99% of the shares to an independent trust. Officially, management deficiencies and risks to European economic security were cited, though no evidence supported these claims. For China, this was perceived as a politically coordinated act with the United States, which had already added Nexperia's parent company, Vintage Technology, to its restricted entities list. A critical factor for the Netherlands is that most of Nexperia's actual production, over 70%, is located in China, in cities such as Dongan and Shanghai. Following the Dutch intervention, Beijing quickly retaliated by blocking exports of power semiconductors and other key products to Europe. Production at Chinese plants fell from 90% to below 10%, leaving European customers without immediate access to essential chip. The industrial impact was immediate. In Germany, Volkswagen and BMW factories slowed production, incurring millions in daily losses and doubling delivery times for high-end models. Within just two weeks, Europe lost over $3.5 billion in production value, while thousands of workers faced temporary layoffs or reduced hours. This episode exposed the vulnerability of European industry due to dependence on critical foreign suppliers like Nexperia. The most direct strategic blow hit ASML. Dutch lithography machines, used to produce the world's most advanced chips, rely heavily on Chinese rare earths. Essential components such as ultrafine cerium lenses, permanent magnets, and magnetic levitation systems have no viable alternatives outside China. Replacement attempts increased costs by 40% and reduced performance by 30%, highlighting the Netherlands' critical dependence on Chinese strategic minerals. China controls roughly 90% of global rare earth refining, turning this regulation into a direct strategic weapon against Dutch technological dominance. The new law also mandates end-user reporting, preventing diversion through third parties, and requires case-by-case -case approval for equipment linked to high-end chip production. This means ASML's production could drop sharply if licenses are delayed, with potential losses exceeding $3 billion annually. Meanwhile, China continues to advance technologically. Huawei and the Chinese Academy of Sciences have achieved breakthroughs considered impossible by Western experts, including extreme ultraviolet, EUV lithography systems capable of producing chips below 7 nanometers. This breaks the ESML Western monopoly and allows China to manufacture advanced chips autonomously despite international sanctions and restrictions. The impact on Chinese industry is immediate. Companies like Xiaomi, Tencent, Alibaba, and BYD are developing their own innovation ecosystems, investing billions in AI and domestic hardware development. The ban on NVIDIA chip purchases in China creates a gap that local manufacturers are rushing to fill, accelerating the formation of self-sufficient supply chains. This paradigm shift shows that true technological power no longer lies solely in producing advanced products but in controlling critical inputs. Rare earths, strategic minerals, specialized software, and advanced manufacturing technology. Europe and the United States face a dilemma. 
Prolonged sanctions may encourage Chinese technological autonomy and reduce Western influence in the global industry irreversibly. The effects extend beyond production. Increasing automation and new digital tools require advanced skills in microfabrication, materials engineering, and high-performance computing. Nations that fail to adapt their education systems quickly may face knowledge gaps that threaten long-term industrial competitiveness. Analysts agree that the current dispute cannot be resolved solely through trade agreements or regulatory adjustments. Debates are emerging over new multilateral mechanisms to ensure a stable flow of strategic resources. Decisions made today will shape the industrial architecture of the coming years and determine who leads global innovation. Controlling critical resources is no longer just an economic advantage. It is strategic power and technological autonomy. China sends a clear message. Whoever controls fundamental materials will shape the future of global technology. The combination of rare earth control measures, advances in lithography, and domestic chip development places the West in an unprecedented scenario. The global semiconductor industry faces a profound reshuffle, where dependence on strategic materials becomes decisive. The technological world is entering a new era, and today's decisions will define global leadership for decades to come. China continues to dominate critical industries, despite continued efforts by the U.S. from a breakthrough in chip-making technology to its stronghold on the rare earths market, the West is really struggling to catch up with China's critical might. Take a look at this next report for more. China has announced a significant advancement in its semiconductor technology with the development of a new laser-based immersion lithography machine. This new equipment achieves a resolution of 65 nanometers, a notable improvement from the previous 90 nanometers. The resolution of lithography machines is crucial for chip making as it determines how finely integrated circuits can be printed silicon wafers. Current leading technology from ASML has a resolution of around 8 nanometers. Despite these advancements, Chinese companies are still working to close the gap with global leaders like ASML, especially given the U.S. sanctions that have restricted access to advanced semiconductor equipment. Imagine a single technological breakthrough so powerful that it shakes the entire global semiconductor industry. In early 2025, Chinese scientists unveiled a new EUV lithography system, a machine capable of producing advanced microchips without relying on ASML, the Dutch giant long considered untouchable in this field. The result? ASML is now facing a crisis that could redefine the global chip landscape. What China just achieved isn't just incremental, it's a game changer. Today we break down how this development happened, why ESML is struggling, and what it means for the future of semiconductors and global technology. For decades, the global semiconductor industry has relied heavily on ASML, whose EUV systems are essential for manufacturing the most advanced chip. Companies like TSMC, Intel, and Samsung have built entire product lines around ASML's technology. Western governments have long considered this supply chain a strategic advantage. China, however, has been quietly preparing for the day when it could no longer depend on foreign suppliers. Starting as early as 2022, Chinese research institutes, backed by billions in state funding, began developing homegrown EUV technology. Tens of thousands